Hey guys, on today's episode we have Nate Passmore. Nate is someone who has made his way from mechanical design engineer all the way up to engineering manager at Lanco. Nate has a lot of great insight and stories about the manufacturing industry, and I'm excited to share them with you. I'm also excited that this is our first video podcast. So without further ado, enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome to Manufacturing Unscripted. I'm your host, Matt Rawl. Today I'm joined with Nate Passmore. He is the engineering manager at Lanco. Hey Nate, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being on the show. I know we've had a little bit of back and forth, and and it's it's finally great to have you on the show um, uh, and talking. Uh, there's a lot of I think similarities in kind of how our careers. You know, I'm my career is going similar to how you've kind of progressed through your thing, and and uh, I kind of wanted a, as a first time guest to kind of hear your story, um, and I can share some of my similar. Uh, uh, stories of my own and and go from there. Great. Yeah, I, I appreciate this opportunity and uh, certainly excited to be here and kind of share a bit about how I got here and, and share that with others. And hopefully, uh, you know, somebody can follow that path if they yeah. want to someday or yeah. whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I grew up, uh, you know, as a small kid, screwing up all sorts of things for my parents and, you know, breaking them. And, and then I finally learned how to start fixing things. And Kind of went from there and i i just always worked with my dad and figured out how to do things and it progressed and i i was lucky enough to figure out that i wanted to go to uh engineering school so i went to university of maine up in orono uh in maine uh up near bangor and mm -hmm. uh, they've got a great uh, engineering technology program that i went through um the thing i really enjoyed about that is that it's a lot of hands-on experience so you learn how to machine yep. things you learn how to weld um, a lot of the things that engineers uh, can really benefit from when they're uh, designing parts and you know trying to realize how things are built. So I really enjoyed that MET program. There was great, and uh, it really grew my skills uh, as an engineer. Um, and I I was lucky enough to get a good opportunity at uh, one of the world class uh, jet engine manufacturers right out of school, and they put me through a two year training program where I I learned a ton about tooling and how to manufacture components a lot of a lot of manual stuff but some automation uh, certainly made me um you know value growth in my career and and learning and just taking something new every day home that you learn at work and making yourselves uh, just smarter every day so yep. i really enjoyed it there met a lot of really really good people and um, kind of took it from there but i at the same time I left college, my, one of my peers also came to Lanco and I kind of kept in touch and we talk about work sometimes and he, he brought up what he was working on. I said, you know, I, I'm really interested in the automation piece. So um, he was able to get my resume in here and I, I was able to, you know, interview and get a position as a uh, mechanical designer. Um, so Lanco brings people in, you go to the assembly floor mm -hmm. and do a, a training stint. I was able to do a little bit more than usual just because I was really interested in learning how to how we built machines. So I spent nine months um, actually leading a project, a, a module design. I, they kind of gave me the whole thing and I, I kind of took it and ran with it. Um, and I was able to build it, do the runoff with the customer, take it to the facility and actually install the machine, uh, kind of see the whole picture of what goes down on that end of it. Um, and from there, I came into the engineering department where I, I worked under a uh, very seasoned project engineer that uh, quickly kind of recognized my abilities to lead projects as well. And we kind of flip-flopped roles. He wanted to step back and I wanted to step up. So oh, wow, he okay. ended up working for me. And um, I learned a ton from him and I appreciate that every day because he, he kind of brought me uh, into this automation world quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, I worked really hard for almost eight years um, designing equipment, leading projects. As a project engineer, I, I probably designed 60 plus machines in that time. Wow. Uh, some really challenging things and yep. you know maybe some not so challenging things, but a lot of challenging things and tight time schedules and things like that, um, which kind of led me to where I am now. So yep. my boss, again, wanted to step down and uh, mm -hmm. go somewhere else. And he, he recognized me as his replacement and we kind of worked together to to get that incorporated and I've been really enjoying it for the last eight months. Um, so a couple of follow-up questions. So you, you mentioned real early on in, in your career that 
you know, the, the hands-on part of your education. And I, I think that's a equality in a lot of mechanical engineers that kind of goes overlooked a bit is, is those who that don't just have the design knowledge, but the manufacturing knowledge. I think, um, I've met a few real textbook mechanical engineers, but I've met a few guys that, you know, are very familiar with the machines and stuff like that. And, and in my experience, the guys that know how to basically make a part far just exceed. And so I think that hands-on experience is super critical very early on in your career. Um, yeah, yep. Um, so, so you mentioned now that you're the engineering manager and, and, and kudos to you. I mean, it sounds like your progression, you know, you basically jumped on a rocket ship and, and you've excelled and, and it's, it's definitely good for companies, you know, especially, you know, Lanco for, and kudos to them for obviously acknowledging talent and, and, and giving you the opportunity. Um, but as a, as a design engineer to an engineering manager, I'm sure your day and your workload looks a little different. Um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> what are some of the, uh, the biggest change, you know, to your, your daily workload, um, from, from design engineer to engineering manager? Yeah. So certainly from a design engineer, the, uh, the working with people, um, mm-hmm. uh, setting them up for success, maybe not so much myself, but putting things in place for them to succeed and get their job done so that we can benefit from that as a company. Um, you know, in, you know, d- uh, working with people through problems that they have or whatever, just being there for people to figure out how to go through different situations. Um, that's certainly something that maybe doesn't come as naturally to an engineering manager or an engineer, uh, mm-hmm. I should say, uh, maybe as some other <laughs> occupation. Yeah. But- Certainly something that I've always enjoyed is working with the team and working with the people to help them do their best yep. job. So that's a big one. Um, the other piece is just being able to manage, um, you know, a million different things all at once and, yep. and try to try to make heads or tails of what's most important at the time to get done so that we can, you know, grow and t- to succeed as a, as a department. Yep. Um, but I, but I really enjoy, uh, I really enjoy that piece of it and we're, at Lanco, we have a really good culture of uh, continuous improvement. Yep. Uh, I've learned a lot over the years here of what I've struggled with and mm-hmm. what things that I'd like to fix for people so that we can do things more efficiently. Been able to do a ton of work on that already in eight months. So we'll continue that. And uh, I think everybody is pretty excited of where Lanco is going. And I, I'm happy to be a big part of that. So Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest things for like a manager, especially engineering manager, is is being able and, and being okay with not having the spotlight on you, you know, and making sure that when your design engineer hits a home run that, you know, they get all the recognition that they deserve, you know, and, and I think yep. there's, a, there's a lot of just, you know, uh, uh, just within yourself to be able to kind of take that back seat and just say, yeah, no, man, you, you nailed it and, you know, you did a great job, you know, because – you know, from a, from a, a face point of view, right? It's it's you know they're getting the recognition, they're getting acknowledged, and but but knowing you know there's someone spinning the wheels in the background too, and and I think uh, it does take certain individuals to be able to do that, and and some people are just more prone to want to be on the design side, you know, and just deal with technology, and not the minutia of a business. So yeah, they certainly have their benefits in either role. You yeah. Know, as- some, there are some days in the management role you go, geez, I wish I was designing stations again. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's at least one task at a time right. or whatever. Um, but there's certainly a lot of challenges there too. That yep. Some days you're like, geez, I wish I could be a manager or something. But, um, yeah. Cause I'm, I'm sure sometimes you go to a guy and say, Hey, look, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how we're going to do it, but you got to figure it out and exactly. I don't have time to do it. So it's all on you. You know, every day, Lanco. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that's definitely the perk. That one of the perks that I've saw was like, oh crap, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do for this. You know, good thing I'm not the design guy. And uh, um, we have smart people. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know, they they say a good sign of a good leader is surrounding yourself with more intelligent people. You know, and uh, uh, and if you're able to do that, that's great. Um, that's- 
something uh, you know I appreciate here at Lanco. We have a lot of really yeah. really good talent, a lot yeah. of high end uh, thinkers, and uh, we're just really, you know, we we can uh, fly by the seat of our pants yeah. and come up with pretty cool stuff along the way. So yeah, it's, it's definitely good in companies that I've seen where they they aren't afraid to call on the senior people or like bring people in. You know, acknowledge there's some people with good strengths in some areas. And utilize that, you know, making sure that, hey, just because they're not directly related to this, I'm sure they have a lot to say and we need to take advantage of that. So if Lanco's doing that, that's that's amazing. Yep, we absolutely do. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about Lanco um, and, and kind of the, the design side because that's more what you're familiar with. You know, you guys service a multitude of industries. I think I did a quick search. I saw automotive, consumer products, aerospace, defense, electronics, medical, commercial. You know, what industry from your experience, you know, you've talked about, you know, 60 plus machines as a design guy. So I'm sure you're well into the hundreds now. Well, what what industry do you think is the most difficult in terms of requirements and, and complexity overall? Yeah, you know, we certainly have had our challenges in pretty much all of those different sectors. Mm-hmm. Um you know, a couple that come to mind is, uh, you know, some micron assembly type machines yep. and really, really small parts. Um, just having to really think every single detail through, including every vibration in the machine mm-hmm. causing effects on the process and making sure that we can make good product. Um, another one that comes to mind is uh, is definitely medical. Uh, there's yep. a lot of requirements around a medical machine yep. validation, yep. stainless steel, special, special touch tooling. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't do this, you can't do that, but yep. you can, you know, trying to figure out what it is that, what you can touch and what you yeah. can do and how, yeah, how you do it. Um, grease, I mean, oh, you yeah. make sure that you're mitigating all kinds of dripping yeah. grease and oils and yep. definitely a, a challenge, but it's really good business to be in too. Uh, we enjoy the medical work. It's yep. a challenge. We like it, but it, it definitely is, um, is trying sometimes yep. to come up with solutions there. What I've noticed with medical is that yeah, they have a lot of rules like that where it's stainless steel, um, you know, the grease, you need a bellows or something to capture the grease that might come out. Those things I always feel like are, are pretty easy to kind of solve. It's it's the ones where it's like automotive, for example. I, you know, a lot of people, I tell people that they're, in terms of automation, just years ahead of everybody else. It's when you're like, okay, I need to figure out how to take 0.25 milliseconds out of this whole thing. In terms of cycle time, and you're like, I I don't I don't know what to tell you. Like it's it's hard. Like I feel they all bring a little bit different thing because you know usually automotive's not worried about so much grease or something like that. It's it's you know how can we run faster and how you know how, I need right. to push your your product to the limits, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I've always found that that's a little bit more complicated, or or you know we build you know, you build or design one thing for a certain torque and all of a sudden, you know, a month later they want to put a new part on it. And it's like, yeah, it needs 50% more torque. And, That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. So like, you know, and I'm sure Lanco has all that too. And, and being able to adapt to that, but I always felt like, you know, medical and consumer, it's, it's really just, you know, procedural things. Like we need to add this, we need to add, the, there's, there's catalog items that you can just buy to make it work where it's just like automotive pushes the limits of your brain to come up with better ideas. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's a fast paced industry. Yep. And I guess where we struggle most, most with automotive is the amount of variance that they want yeah. to run through one single machine. <laughs> yep. uh, and they may not even look alike, yep. but they want to run through the same mm-hmm. machine with minimal change out uh, and yep. fast cycle times, like you mentioned. Um, the other thing is, is they're always in the prototype phase when we're working yep. on the design of the machine. So, yep. um, you know, the product's changing as we're designing a machine to build it. And sometimes those changes are very impactful and sometimes they're not. But most of the times they are. And yep. it's hard to stay on top of. For yeah. Sure. And and I know some companies that, you know, some of the bigger companies are going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're building the prototype machine here, say, in the States. And then, but the actual production machines are going to go over here and, all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of lists of differences and requirements and things like that. And, and being able to kind of take all that in and, and satisfy, you know, both the, the prototype lab and then create a machine that's 
you know, not too overly different from the production side because obviously right. you don't want your team developing seven different unique machines that do the same thing. You're trying to kind of make a, a, a general, you know, machine that, you know, is custom to what they want, but is general enough that they can use in both locations. Right. So. Yeah, I had a, I had some motors under my desk for like two years. So they were <laughs> special IP rated motors. Oh, yeah. I, one of our machines was going to be going to a certain facility yep. uh, that required that. And then halfway through the design phase, it changed and it was going to go to a different facility so I could use our standard motor and those yeah. things just sat under my desk and some of my coworkers used to get on my case for saving them but I'm like well what happens when this comes down the pike again we're yep. going to need it right so yeah no I, I, I never know we uh so a lot of my work's more on the development side and we have a lot of scenarios just like that and you know we end up using them for developments instead of our standard stuff we're like yeah it does the same thing we need might as well use it we you know we got it and we don't use it for anything else. But yeah, I, I totally understand where that where you're at on that too. Um, okay, well, so uh, you know, Lanco is basically one of the the leading assembly automation companies in the world. Um, you know, what what technology are you most excited about? Um, you know, looking ahead. I'm going to say all of it. I, I, it's just amazing how every day, how many things change and how many things improve and, and how we can utilize that as an integrator. So, you know, if it, anything from uh, speed of maybe a linear motor type technology that mm -hmm. we've been using a lot of lately or um, new sensor types that are just way better mm -hmm. uh, vision, that kind of stuff. Just everything is getting faster. The PLC response times are so fast now. Yep. We can make our machines run faster just by that. Yep. Um, it, it's just an exciting time to be in the industry. Everything's just exciting, accelerating. <laughs> yep. So trying to stay on top of that, it's a real challenge, but it's, it's part, part of the fun part of the job, you know, it's, yep. what, what can we use for this? That's, that's out there. That'll work. It's, it's, there's amazing technology that we can integrate. And, and that's what we do. We take all these pieces of a technology from companies all around the world and identify what would be best for the application and integrate it. So are you guys are you guys able to use any type of like simulation software in some of your machines? Uh, yeah, so we're Lanco is kind of a make it robust, make it yeah. Um, you know, it, it passes the the eye test or whatever. Yep. You just kind of look at it mm -hmm. and say that's going to be good enough. So we do a lot of that. But um, when we get down into it, um, for example, we had a gantry that was four meters long. That yep. was, way up in the air and moving some 100 kilograms of tooling. So, yeah, oh, we, wow. we run okay. that through FEA analysis through SolidWorks and okay. make sure that everything is going to be robust and, and not flex where we can't have it flex and those kinds of things. We do, you know, big presses too. Yep. Uh, we definitely have the capabilities to do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's um, something I guess you're seeing a lot more. You know, it's definitely a, uh, um, a selling point for a lot of people now that, you know, being able to, you know, not just tell you, but show you how a system would run or, or prove right. it out with numbers. Um, mm -hmm. What? So you mentioned linear motors and stuff. Um, now, are you seeing kind of um, an uptick in more automation? Just obviously with everything going on right now, in terms of um, you know, uh, maybe not necessarily replacing a operator, but. Um, are you seeing kind of a more demand for something along those lines and, you know, and robotics as well? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it does seem like it's increasing, especially during this time of yep. the pandemic. Uh, yep. We've, you know, just to get test kits for COVID-19 uh, mm -hmm. produced for the world. Yeah. Uh, we've been involved in many uh, seven or eight machines now, I think. Um, wow. To okay. Test kits. And a lot of that has been really fast-paced machinery that definitely cruises way faster than you could do it with a, an assembly line of okay. people, unless you have, you know, a lot of people on the line. But um, so, yeah, we've seen an uptick there just, just because we need it uh, yep. as a as world. So, yep. No, that's, that's, that's great. Great to be a part of, yeah. Yeah, I think anyone that's been able to kind of get involved in, in that, you know, in the pandemic kind of solution, um, you know, has definitely seen – you know, success because, you know, obviously it's, it's the demand is very much there and it's important. Right. So people are prioritizing it 
as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, and the people really want to do it. You know, the the people at Lanco are willing to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us on the teams were putting in 100-hour weeks designing from home during the pandemic to try to get those designs out. And then when the machines hit the floor, the people on the floor were working, uh, you know, seven days a week. And two shifts, we had to gap them out. We had no overlap in shifts because of the uh, sanitization that had to happen between. That's great. Um, so we were having to figure out new ways for pass downs and you know all that stuff. So we did what it took to get those jobs done, and it was pretty exciting. No, that's that's great that you guys were able to do that. Um, so what's next for Lanco? Uh, new industries, more expansion, more capabilities. I know you mentioned you know more standardization. You know what, what what's on the horizon for you guys? There's a lot on the horizon for Lanco. I, I, there's a lot coming down the pike. Um, we're certainly going to be expanding. Uh, we've got a division in Malaysia uh, oh, okay. that we're developing heavily. Uh, we're getting them yep. uh, built up uh, to be able to do a lot of production over there. Um, we're also going to be expanding into, I'm sure, Europe. And you know, mm-hmm. we haven't, I guess, identified much further than that, but certainly yep. in the expansion mode at the moment. Um, but basically to facilitate the expansion, we're working really hard internally to try to figure out how we can do that effectively. So yep. that's fixing our processes here and, and working hard to do that. And again, that's kind of what I'm excited to be a part of as engineering manager now is to try to figure out what that plan is so that we can leverage it and and, uh, and expand. Um, but uh, we've got a new CEO here at Lanco and, um, you know, uh, a lot of new perspectives, a lot of, a lot of people in, like in my role, we've got a, uh, assembly floor um, manager. We've got a PM manager. A lot of the management around here, the service manager, mm-hmm. um, similar age to me. We, we've all kind yep. of come into these roles, and we're pretty excited about it and uh, looking for what's next. So um, we're going to continue to standardize as a group. Uh, to basically, what that's going to help us do is to speed up how you know our design so we can design faster. Mm-hmm. It'll also give our customers kind of a heads up in the beginning to say, hey, if you stick with our standards, we can produce this for you at a, you know, this cost yep. or a faster lead time. If you're going to want to customize it like this, we can do it. We're good at that. Yeah. But it's going to be this and it's going to be that kind of schedule and just laying that out up front so everybody expects what they're going to get right out of the gate. So, you know, so yeah, standardize. One- going to be huge for us. Yeah, one of the big things, you know, in, in my career, you know, I've spent pretty much my entire career with Promess is their one of their biggest things is no surprises. And and right. that standardizing really helps doing that when when you can kind of give them the roadmap right at the beginning saying this is pretty much how we do it. You know, if you want to go off, you know, we got off-road tires, we can do it, but right. you know, it's a little bit more bumpier and a little bit's unknown and so we kind of get to that destination. So, yeah, um, that's exactly right. Yep. What, so you mentioned, you know, Malaysia, Europe, you know, as engineering manager, um, are you going to, is your reach going to kind of extend out there as well? Like, is what, yep. what, 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 how has it been a little bit? Cause I think you have a little bit of exposure to Malaysia. It sounds like, how has it been kind of managing from, from where you are basically to the opposite end of the globe? It's a challenge. It's it's definitely a challenge. The thing that helps us a little bit is that now we've all had to figure out how to work remotely. So yep. we can utilize a lot of those skills that everybody had to develop during that time um, to work with them over in Malaysia. But then you then you're left with a 12 or 13 hour time difference. Yeah, definitely uh, adds the complexity. I think that's the number one reason it makes it difficult. Yeah, um, the remote work really isn't, but the time difference is. So. You know, we've been doing things lately of, uh, you know, having somebody here. We have an interdivisional um, kind of uh, engineer coordinator now, mm-hmm. and and she's been chasing it really hard. Her main goal is to get them going and up to speed and production ready and, mm-hmm. and use, use all of our tools that we have in place. Been doing a great job, and she's working like a split shift. So now she can cover, uh, you know, four hours of their time so that they can answer questions and work together. So we're we're really trying to work well together, yeah. and we've met each other. They they've come here to Lanco and okay. Westbrook. A couple of the designers did for, um, you know, like a six month training. Um, oh wow! Okay. So we've been really trying to incorporate them into our process and and keep them in mind every day as we come to work. So 
Um, I don't have the bandwidth to be able to put enough energy into that. So <laughs> yeah. that's why we developed this other um, this other role that yep. their main goal is to facilitate it. So no, that's great. I mean, I I just imagine you know myself in your shoes, just having clocks all over the place with the different areas, just because. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we deal a lot with uh, Germany, and I think they're six hours ahead. Mm-hmm. So it's always like one of those things where we might mention something about talking to our counterparts, and all of a sudden we look at the clock, and I'm like, ah, we missed it by like a half hour. Can't get them till tomorrow. Yeah, German <laughs> Germans are very punctual. <laughs> so yeah. uh, when it comes to clocking out, in my experience, so if uh, I've had very little success in getting them after five. Um, right. But, but yeah, I mean, that's, I got to imagine that's, uh, uh, it sounds like someone in your position is probably pretty excited about is kind of having that also experience of, of managing basically globally. Um, it's gotta be yeah, kind of, yeah, definitely is eye opening for sure. Yeah. The challenges that come along with it, and, you know, grows us as an organization for sure. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we're, we're learning all the time and, uh, it's a good challenge, and there's a lot of benefit to doing it. You know, if uh, we have a customer over in Asia, they want their machine built there and serviced there. So yep. we we want to be able to provide that to them. Yep. So, uh, well, great, uh, Nate. Uh, great stuff so far. Uh, before we kind of wrap things up, I, I typically like to open it up to to the guests. And, and is there anything that you want to talk about that maybe we missed, or maybe you want to expand on? Um, before, um, before we go to closing? Um, again, I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity. Yep. It was really fun to kind of share what Lanco has been doing. And, uh, I guess my last statement will be that, uh, Lanco is a really exciting place to, uh-huh. to be at the moment. And I, there's a, there's a bright future ahead and there's a lot of automation that's really exciting coming down the pike. So, um, you know, we're just going to work really hard to try to get our customers the solutions they need when they need them. So, again, thanks for your help. And, uh, you know, I've used ProMess in my designs yep. quite a few times. <laughs> so I appreciate all the, the hardware you've sent us over yeah. the years as well. All right. So. Well, with that, uh, thank you, Nate. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Until next time. Very good. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Promise Incorporated, hosted by Matthew Rawl, produced by myself, Lauren Rawl, mixed and edited by Ben Parsons. Please make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us at podcast at promiseinc.com.